Hey everybody, uh, video four of our vCloud Director 9.5 Cross VDC series showing some of uh, the functionality with Cross VDC networking. Uh, in this video, uh, we're gonna go through uh, testing uh, virtual machine connectivity and how would actually this work with uh, a, I would say a control switchover between sites and also a unexpected failure. Um, between sites and how the traffic actually is handled there. Uh, we're gonna start, Abinov and I are gonna start off with a drawing first where we're gonna walk through this. So I'm gonna work the uh, bottom up and then Abinov is gonna talk uh, when we get to the natting section here. So starting off at the bottom here, um, I have two Photon virtual machines, one on each respective site, site A and site B. I have Daniel App and Daniel App B. I know these are very creative names, but uh, they're all connected to our stretch network that we've already created inside of vCloud Director uh, called Daniel Stretch Network. It's, again, uh, showed this in a previous video, but all we did was created this network and then attached the virtual machines to it. Each of these have a transit interface that vCloud Director uh, auto plums here. Site B right now is our active site while site A is our passive. Uh, Abinov, do you wanna talk about what happens when we get northbound from here? Uh, sure, so what will happen is um, basically, you, we have these NAT rules set up. And so if you try to ping from Daniel app, for example, and site B is active, you'll, you'll notice that uh, ICMP responses, for example, a ping coming from site B. Um, as soon as you were to swap egress points or switch egress points, site A would become active and site B would become passive or standby. Excellent. Yeah, and right now uh, the system we're gonna be connected to is what we call our control center. So it's this top left one here. So when we do trace pass, you'll see us actually trying to see where's the traffic e actually egressing or where are we ingressing in from the control center. So we'll come back to the drawing, but let's go to um, our session here. So uh, if we look at vCloud Director, again, we have site B as the active site. Uh, site A is my standby. And if we open up my putty sessions uh, that I have, we'll take a look and we can see that my 201 is active. I have availability. And if we do a trace path, we can see the traffic that it egresses outbound to uh, the, on the site B. And then it finally hits my control center virtual machine, which I'm on. Um, Abinov, why don't you remind the audience again what this second hop is? This is the hop between the UDLR or the stretch network to the tenant ESG. So, well, basically you have the 172.16.220, so 222, so that's the um, subnet for the stretched network. And then the 192.168.253.3, that's the IP, it's a slash 28 that's auto plumbed by VCD. And that's for the transit network interface between the UDLR, the Universal Distributed Logical Router and the tenant ESG. And so um, those are auto configured and VCD obviously auto creates the transit network. Um, and attaches them to both the, attaches the transit network to the ESG and to the UDLR. Okay, great, excellent. All right, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and let's switch our egress points. Let's switch it from B to A and see just what happens here. So we'll go ahead and click the swap egress point. This is gonna again swap it from B to A and we're gonna press okay. All right, so Abinov, why don't you tell everybody what happens in the background? What is vCloud Director doing here? Sure, so since vCloud Directors um, basically plumbed the routes, right, the BGP routes where region B was active with the weight of 60 and region A was uh, standby with the weight of 30, now BGP is do, gonna do its thing here. And so what's gonna happen is because now region A is active, and, uh, and so VC, what VCD does is now makes region A the active with a weight of 60 and region B standby with a weight of 30. So it's essentially just flipping the weights. And you'll notice BGP kicking in here. And so now you're getting a response instead of from 
now you're getting it from 101.45. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty amazing to see that. And, uh, you know, all I had to do was essentially um, hit a, a single click inside exactly. of the Google director. So if you were to do this, even, I mean, we have a cross VC NSX, but in order for, you know, to have automated failover or autom automate this, you would have to script something or you like a, the, if something went down, for example, the, the provider or user would have to go in to NSX and configure the BGP, but v, VCD is automatically doing this for us. Yeah, right on. So um, the 201 SSH sessions failed. Um, I was able to kick them back on on the 101 side. And if we do a comparison of the trace path, we can definitely see the difference here. So we can see that now we're going out the 101 uh, side, which is site A, and uh, compared to the 201, which we saw previously when uh, site B was the explicit egress point primary uh, location. Uh, so pretty amazing uh, to see that. And again, um, I don't think I lost a ping um, when I when we did this. If we looked at up here, we can see it did the flip from 201 to 101 without uh, losing a blip. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe even just a little high uh, packet there, but um, pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and um, let's go fail uh, region A. Uh, let's just say that... Um, uh, we were doing something in here or the um, somebody uh, just got into the virtual machine environment and just shut down the uh, active edge there. So we'll go ahead and let's just make sure that I'm on A and this is DCP edge and then is and we're going to go ahead and do a shutdown. All right. So I know we're using the default uh, keep alive uh, timers here, right? Let's, yep. uh, let's talk to the audience on what's happening in the background. So um, now that it's basically BGP again, so what's gonna happen now is because one of the sites went down, which had the, the active, which had a weight of 60, we would have gone to that, but now, you know, there's that, that uh, next hop is down. So now it's like, okay, let's choose the next weight and the, the next weight is 30. So even though that's a smaller weight, but because the, the, the site, the next hop with weight 60 is down, we're gonna go to weight 30. Um, what's also happening is because of the um, keep alive and hold down timer settings, which um, are keep alive is 60 seconds and hold down timer is three times that or 180. There's a little bit of a momentary um, request a timeout or blip as you're seeing in the putty sessions, but as to, um, you'll see, and this is to allow for a graceful failover. Um, this can uh, this can be fine tuned via the API, but basically you're now going to see us go through the next hop with the uh, weight of thirty. Gotcha. All right. Well, um, and I just opened on the back screen here. Um, we opened up the UDLR and we can see the BGP configuration that uh, yep. VCloud Director auto plumps, right? And again, yep. talking about the different weights and everything, we can see that um, this was our primary, while well, this is our secondary on that. We'll give this a moment and we should start seeing activity here shortly. And again, all the putty sessions should be down and they are to be expected. And apology, Paul, yeah, and there we go. And just like you said before, just to reiterate, uh, this keep alive timer could be controlled through the API, is that correct? Exactly, so if you want like, you know, instant, instant failover, um, you can control those keep alives, but um, generally by the design guide, it's good to keep something um, a little bit graceful. So there's a, obviously because you don't want things to suddenly, you know, all the, your site be to suddenly, you know, receiving traffic at once, for example, you want some sort of graceful failover, but yes, you can control the keep alive. Yeah. To, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it wasn't much time. I mean, again, uh, yeah. we lost it for a 
period of time, but it, you know, we're not talking about a significant amount of time, but again, can be adjusted. And we could see that 101.45 is not responding and that's to be expected because the edge is down, right? Uh, I would expect yep. that. So, exactly. so let's go ahead and uh, bring back up my DCP edge. And we should start seeing those pings come back up. And while this is coming back up, Abby, if our active failed, we would expect it to actually fail back, use the BGP weights and seamlessly fail back over to the active egress path. Is that correct? Yeah, so what would happen is now that we brought the active back up, if that was all in good shape, then you'd see it go back through the, the normal active. But obviously if there were some issues with active, like let's say you powered it back on and there was some, I don't know, like the VM for the edge didn't power on back correctly or something was wrong with the host, then you would still see it go through the standby. So now you can see, for example, it nicely failed or, or nicely went back to the active. So now 101.45 is responding again. Yep, and we can see that uh, my 101 is now my active SSH interface here. And if we do a trace path, I should be going through the A side. Yep, excellent. Cool. All right, well, um, Thanks everybody for watching our video series. This one's a little longer than the previous three, but uh, we thought it was very important to kind of walk through this. Uh, more to come. Again, uh, check out cloudsolutions.vmware.com and uh, feel free to reach out to us if you have any other questions. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.